Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. 1 Samuel chapter 17 is our text. 1 Samuel chapter 17. And uh, I just, I, I really feel tonight, I, I, wanna, I wanna put an impartation. The devil operates through fear. Did you know that? The devil operates through fear. Fear, what is fear? Fear is believing something you can't see will happen. Fear is what grips us, Pastor Claudia, isn't it? We, we, you know, we have a lump and then we, you know, look up Google and then fear comes and fear says, oh, this could be terminal. This could be the C word. This could be. And so fear is believing something you can't see will happen. It's so different to faith. Faith is the complete opposite. Faith is believing something you can't see will happen. Completely different to fear. Completely different to fear. Fear is believing something you can't see will happen, whereas faith is believing something you can't see will happen. So different to fear. Did you notice that? Fear is so different. Fear is believing something you can't see will happen. Not, not faith. Faith is believing something you can't see will happen. So watch this. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear. So either A... Either, either A, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear because he's negligent. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear because he forgot. He's forgetful. Or God has not given you and I a spirit of fear because it's a passenger you don't need to ride shotgun with you through life. I've made a decision in my life many, many years ago that whenever fear tries to, to get up in the front seat, whenever fear tries to ride shotgun, whenever, the, whenever fear starts piping off, I recognize if you were, were meant to help me right now, God would have given you to me. But God didn't give me a spirit of fear. He gave me a spirit of love, a spirit of power, and a spirit of, of a sound mind. And I notice that fear robs love. It robs power. It robs a sound mind. When, when 2020 hit and fear was at an all-time high, we saw riots in the street. We saw looting in the street. We saw people being beaten and murdered and all kinds of stuff. Because where fear is, love isn't. The Bible says perfect love drives drives out all fear. So can I just tell you tonight that no matter what the devil is up to, you don't need to fear. Kick fear to the curb and take a spirit of faith. Tonight, you're going to receive faith. How do I know you're going to receive faith? Because the Bible says you're going to receive faith. Where does the Bible say that? Glad you asked. Romans 10, 17 says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. At this church, we've decided we're not preaching Reader's Digest. We're not preaching Time Magazine. We're not preaching tabloids. We're preaching the undiluted, undisputed, infallible Word of the living God. All right. So 1 Samuel 17, verse 1. 1 Samuel 17, verse 1. It says, And Elijah the Tishbite, which sounds painful, but it's not. That's just where he was from. Of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, Ahab was the king, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there will not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. If you said, Pastor, what is the goal? What is your assignment at Awaken Church? What is your mission? What is your objective? Why, 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 why the 5.30 a.m. men's prayer meeting? Why the, the women's prayer meeting? Why, why the daily Bible reading? Why? Why? Because I want to get to the place where Elijah is. Elijah didn't say there'll be no dew nor rain these years except at his word. Oh, so you're saying he's arrogant. No, no, no. Elijah was so sold out to God. He's like, I, I ain't going to be distracted off course. I ain't going to be pulled off course. I couldn't care less about being shadow banned and blocked and 
Facebook won't let me post anymore and Instagram won't let me post. He couldn't care less because he knew the power of God's word. And so he says, let me tell you, when you hear from me, you're hearing from God. I've so made a decision that all I'm going to listen to and all I'm going to speak is the words of heaven. There will not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. And if you think, oh, who, who is your word? You're going to discover that my word is his word, his word in my mouth going forth. You're going to find that there's a congruency we want to be aligned with the word of God our assignment in every every location that we have whether it's here in Balboa whether it's San Marcos whether it's Bressy Ranch whether it's El Cajon whether it's Chula Vista Eastlake whether where else have we got Salt Lake City oh Salt Lake City our favorite um <clears throat> It doesn't matter where we are. We, we are determined we're going to be bringing forth the word of God. So anyway, watch this. So there will not be ju- then, the word of, then the word of the Lord came to him. See, if you speak the word, the word will find you. If you depart from the word, the word will bypass you and go to somebody else that, that makes the word their home. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it shall be that you will drink from the brook. And I have commanded ravens to feed you there. God can even make the most scavenger, selfish blackbirds. So he went out there by the word of the Lord. And he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning. Bread and meat in the evening. He could almost time his watch. Here they come, bread and meat. Oh, what's on? Oh, scones. Scones, darling. Steak. Hmm. Medium rare, just the way I like it. And so he's, he's out there bread and meat in the morning. But watch this. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. It happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. What do you do when the brook dries up? What do you do when they let you off? What do you, what do, you do when they say, hey, listen, uh, food's running. What do you do when they say, hey, there's empty shelves? What do you do when they say, hey, We're going to have to terminate your employment. What do you do when, hey, we've got to let things go? Hey, you know, because of gas prices, we can't. What what, what do you do? Verse 8, then the word of the Lord came to him. Then the word of the Lord came to him. God sends out his word all the time. The word always goes forth from the Lord. God is always looking for a heart that is open to the word of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came to him and says, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I've commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, there was a widow gathering sticks. And he called her and said, Please, bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. He was thirsty. It's been a drought. And as she was going to get it, he thought, Aha. If she knows where there's water in a drought, this must be the widow. What a, it's not a coincidence. God said a widow is going to provide in Zarephath. I turn up to the city here at the gate. There's a widow. She's, you know, got her black dress on in mourning. She's obviously lost somebody. And when I called out to her, get me a drink, she knows where the source of water is. So as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. I'm also feeling a little bit peckish. I haven't eaten since the bacon and eggs I had for breakfast. He was quite liberated, if I was honest with you. So she said, as the Lord your God lives. It's amazing how we abandon God in tough times. As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son. In other words, You're not invited. (laughs) I'm going to prepare for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Elijah said to her, do not, do not, do not fear. All the things to say. Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but... Make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. Notice he didn't say, hey, why don't you go and do that? And, and, and if there's anything left. 
He, he didn't say, hey, go, go and do that. Let, let me pray over it. Let me anoint the oil with oil. <laughs> let me wave my hand in a magical circle. He says, go and do what you have said. I don't want you to go to fear. I want you to go to faith. The Bible says faith without works, faith without actions, faith without. You'll always know faith by the action. He says, go and do what you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. Then afterwards, you and your son eat. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the Lord sends rain, until the Lord sends relief, until the Lord breaks the drought over the land on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household. Hang on, hang on. What does it say she and he and her son? And her household. All of a sudden she's like, <laughs> you guys cooking in there? Oh yeah, we're related. I'm your second cousin twice removed. Hello. She's, she's got relatives. Coming in, she's like, who are you? My name is Ranjit. Well, we've been friends for many, many years. She's like, wow, who would have thought? Like she's got, maybe not. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Which he spoke by Elijah. I, I want you to understand something, and this is very, very important, that the word, the word framed the world. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Everything that was made was made by the Word. God said, and it was so. And then God said, and it was so. And God said, and it was so. Droughts can come. Famines can come. Droughts, famines, pestilences, all of these things, they don't catch God off guard. God doesn't say, oh my gosh, Gabriel, what are we going to do? There's a recession. Oh my gosh, there's a, there's a World Economic Forum agenda to try to cripple America by cutting off her food supply and, and, and putting rogue people in positions of power that, that will rule against the, the, the Constitution and against the people. What are we going to do? God, God knows that His Word has seen the most rogue dictators. His Word has outlasted. His Word, His Word Word, the most wicked governors, the most wicked kings, the most wicked despots, the most wicked leaders that have risen and they have come and gone, but his word endureth forever. The same word that framed the heavens is the same word that works today. God's word works on the mountaintop and it works in the valley. God's word works in the bountiful and God's word works in the drought. God's word works in every single season. The only time you need to panic or worry is if you've departed from the word, but if you're with the word, the word will keep you secure. The word will find you. We want to be a church that gets people rooted and on the foundation of the word of God so that the word of the Lord can find you. And when the word of the Lord comes in, it will release you into blessing. Amen. All right. Well, come with me to Malachi, one of the, our favorite scriptures. In fact, I, I think it's a favorite scripture, but a lot of people get nervous whenever you talk. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, Malachi. He's going to talk about the time. So, Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, How have we robbed you? In what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You're cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. So, point number one is the supernatural power of the tithe. The supernatural power of the tithe. Because what, 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 what did Elijah ask the, the widow for, Mr. Ratowski? He asked her for a tithe. The first is always belongs to God. Elijah knew, I'm the one that carries the word. I'm the dispenser of God's word in the earth. Sweetheart, you, you, you literally out of your own mouth said you've got enough bread or enough flour and enough oil for one last cake. And then you and your son, the grave of your husband's body, the, the dirt is still fresh. And there are two little graves next door. He's like, sweetheart, fill them in. You're not going to need it. Because if you seek first the kingdom, if you put God first, 
when she gave to God first, when she put God first, and I've seen people preach, oh, when she gave to God, the flour and the oil, wow, that was close. That's not what happened. She pours out the flour, pours out the oil, makes the cake, gives to the man of God, then her and her son eat it. But when she gets up the next morning, well, that's weird. I thought I used it all. I must have misjudged it. Pours it out, makes it. Man of God first, comes back, her and her son eat it, goes back. That's weird. Every day, every week. There is a supernatural power that is released through the tithe. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, who, who, who is the tithe for? Who is the tithe for? Because some people say, well, you know, the tithe, that's an Old Testament thing. The tithe is for the people. of the. Some people say, well, the tithe is just for the, the Jewish people. Well, well let, let, let's, let's have a read it. Let's have a read and see. Verse 10 says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And test me now. Try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open, if I will not open, what translation is that? No, it's not. It shouldn't say that. It says, uh, and try me now on this. If I will not open, hang on, who's, who's the tithe? Who's tithing for? It's for, who, sorry, who is it for? If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there's not been room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord. And you're saying, hang on, whoa, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. I went to a financial seminar and they were talking about, you know, you, you put this money away and you put that money away and you put them in jars and you cut up your credit cards. And so if right now, if I'm not making it on 100% and you're saying that somehow I can go further on 90%, Mr. Pastor, you're not an economist or an accountant. How's it going to work? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Pastor Summoner and I are both from... Australia. Summer's from a beautiful part of Sydney. I'm from Wollongong. It's about an hour and a half drive from, from where we both grew up. When, when we've flown to Australia, I, we fly United. United is better than Qantas, if I was honest with you. Qantas pilots, you know, they're, they're trained in flight school, darling, aren't they? They go through flight school. Whereas the United pilots uh, are like Pastor Charles. They're, they're, they're military pilots, they're, they're, they're from the Air Force or they're from, you know, Navy pilots. And then when they, they retire, they, they get hired by. And the difference between a Qantas pilot and, and a United pilot is United pilots, when, 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 when they look at the weather and they see turbulence, they don't go around it. They go through the turbulence. Whereas the Qantas pilots are like, oh, 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 oh my gosh. Roger, darling. Look at the weather man. It's inclement weather, darling. Uh, let's, let's contact Tower. Perhaps Tower will give us permission to fly uh, to 38,000 feet and see if we can get air in. Perhaps we have to get around it. But not, 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 not United. I'm United that the plane's shaking. <laughs> you know, you see the wing doing this. You're like, man, I just hope we land with one wing. If we, you know, just... I think we can still make it on. Why? You're like, the whole place is shaking. The pilots are like, yeah, baby, wow, this is better than six flight. I mean, they, they, they're just united. But when we get to Australia, when we get to Sydney Airport, Mascot Airport, they have a curfew, 6 a.m. I can't tell you, our flight is, leaves, leaves LAX around 9.45, 10 o'clock, and it's meant to arrive in Sydney at like 6.30 a.m. That's, that's the, the scheduled time. But because they don't go around, they go through. And especially a lot of times we have a tailwind. I can't tell you how many times, uh, folks. And I'm not sure if that's just like standard learning. If you want to be a pilot, you have to, you have to do the, uh, folks. Before you say anything. It's like 
Pilate speak. I want to warn them. Yeah, well, before you warn them about anything, start with, uh, folks. I can't tell you how many times we've landed in Sydney. This is true, Kenny. We landed in Sydney and it's 5.08 a.m. Uh, folks. Welcome to Sydney. Welcome to Australia. Uh, time right now is uh, 5.08 a.m. You may want to adjust your watches. Unfortunately, mascot airport, nobody turns the lights on until 6 a.m. So we've got to sit here on the tarmac. We can't let you out. So we have to sit there for 50 minutes because we had a tailwind the whole way. There are times I've flown to Europe, flown to England, and we get there an hour behind because we had headwinds. The Bible teaches us that when when Adam sinned, God cursed the ground. He said, cursed be the ground because of your disobedience. Out of the sweat of your brow and out of toil, out of difficult labor, the earth will yield to you its increase. I want you to notice in the tithe portion here, God says, when you and I bring the tithe, God doesn't change the ground. God says, I'll open the windows of heaven. In other words, God says, there is a curse working against your 100%. But if you will take 10% out of that 100% and you bring Bring it to to God. You say to God, God, I'm bringing this to you because I'm putting you first. I'm declaring that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. See, every king has two responsibilities, protection and provision. And we see that here. I'll rebuke the devourer, protection. I'll open the windows of heaven, pour out such blessing, provision. When when you bring the tithe, all of a sudden you find with 90%, you ask any pilot, and, you know, if, if, if Abel was up here, he would tell you, if you're a pilot and you're flying with a tailwind, you only need, you don't even need 90%. You could fly on less fuel because the tailwind will not only get you there ahead of time, but it'll also carry that plane further. Whereas on 100%, working, flying into a headwind, flying into, you, 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 the pilot sometimes says, man, lucky we put in more fuel or, or, or we have to pull over. The supernatural power of the tithe. You go further on 90%. In Luke 18, we don't have the, the time to read the story. Is Luke 18 has the, the rich young ruler. What, what, what was his name again? Kevin? No, what was his name? We don't know. We don't, we don't know his name. So, so Luke 18 has the rich young ruler. Luke 19 has Zacchaeus. The end of chapter 18 of Luke the rich young ruler, comes to Jesus, kneels down, says, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? She says, you know the commandments. He a piece of cake. All of those I've kept since I was a kid. She's like, wow, that makes two of us. Really? All right, let's test. I'm about to give everything on a cross. Let's see how much of God's law and God's word lives in you. Go, sell, sell your, your possession. Sell the stuff you've got. Give to the poor, follow me, you'll have treasure in heaven. And the Bible says at this, the rich young ruler went away sad because he had great riches. I want you to notice, Jesus says, go sell what you have and give to the poor. He didn't say, go and take everything and give it to the poor. Why did he say, sell what you have? Why, 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 why bother putting it? On Craigslist, why bother selling it and then giving the money to the poor? Because the rich young ruler went away having great riches. Can I tell you anything that you have that you can't give, you don't have, it has you. Whatever you have or you think you have, but you can't give, you don't have it, it has you. So Jesus says, I want you to sell your Rolex. Oh, that's a $50,000 Rolex, mister. Really? Put it on eBay and see how much you get for it. I can't believe that jack wagon offered me 20 grand. That's a 50. He, He would see that his trust in material accumulation of possessions depreciates, is vain, is empty, is shifting sand. Now watch this. There's a lot of people that say, "Uh uh-huh, see that, Pastor? Can you see that? God wants us to get rid of all of our stuff. 
He wants us to have nothing. Nowhere did Jesus say, have nothing. He did say, can you give anything? Can you give everything? Because he says, give and you will have treasure. Yeah, he said treasure in heaven, not here on earth. Oh, hang on, not so fast. Because treasure in is not treasure for, point number two. Treasure in is not treasure for. For example, this is maybe, this might set some alarm bells off, but I bank with U.S. Bank. I have my money in U.S. Bank. If I got a phone call from U.S. Bank on a Friday and all you could hear was and music in the background going, Hey, is this Pastor Jurgen? Yeah, on behalf of all the employees, hey, we, we just want to say thank you for all your money. We're, we're down here in Cabo. We're partying. Hang on, whoa, 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 whoa. My money's in U.S. Bank. It's not for U.S. Bank. It's, it's in, it's not for can I tell you, you don't need money when you get to heaven. When you and I get to heaven and you arrive at the, 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 the pearly gates, you, you're not going to see a panhandler. And you're like, you, you know, like, oh, oh, um, shoot, because I want to make sure I get into heaven. And I don't want to, you know, like I feel awkward now at the lights and, you know, the guy's holding a sign. I'm like, oh, man, I, I, I didn't make eye contact. I did. Ah, oh, I made eye contact. I've only got a 20 art. Oh, do I ask him? Like, is it, do you ask? Can you make cha- Like, it's just, I feel, oh, well, are you mad? You just turned up to heaven. Imagine that, you're heaven, like eternity. Like, and you're like, man, I, you know, I, I don't want to, I want to make, I, I want to put on a good impression. And there's a panhandler there and you're like, oh, I don't even have any pockets. Who are you? I was a thief on the cross. Got saved at the last minute, 2,000 years ago. Didn't really have time to store up anything. It's pretty tough up here. What? What kind of a distorted view of heaven do so many Christians have? Treasure in is not treasure for. Let me say that again. Treasure in heaven is not treasure for heaven. Treasure in heaven means you walk on the earth with a bountiful heaven above you that you are continually able to draw down from, that you walk in a heavenly blessing. You walk in heavenly provision. You walk in heavenly favor. The Bible said to Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, your prayers and your giving have come up before God in heaven as a, remor- as a memorial, as a remembrance. And so you're going to be the first Gentile filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues because of your generosity and your prayers have come up. The treasure wasn't in there for him. It was for him to experience the power of God here on earth. So, so, so the, rich, the rich young ruler can't give. But one chapter later, Zacchaeus is in a tree looking and Jesus says, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm having lunch at your house. Just invites himself. Who does that? I mean, sometimes you read Jesus, you're like, man, it's like he owns the whole. Oh, actually you do, don't you? All right. And so, so Jesus goes to Zacchaeus' house. And we don't even know, we don't even know if Jesus even preached. Like there's no record of a sermon. But Zacchaeus says, Jesus, I want you to know today. If I have defrauded anybody as a tax collector, if I kind of fudge the figures a little bit, I will restore everything. In fact, I'll restore fourfold. And and look at this. Right now, I'm going to give to the poor. Jesus says to him, today, salvation has come to this house. What was the difference? Both of them had an encounter with Jesus. One would not let Jesus touch his moolah. The other one was so touched in his heart, he gave his moolah. We're not trying to take from you. We're trying to get to you. I know no other way through a drought in Zarephath, a drought in the land, 
then seek ye first the kingdom and his and all these things will be added I don't know any other way for you to get through drought for you to get through famine through for you to get through recession then you bring your tithe and it opens the windows of heaven and pours out such blessing there's not room enough to contain it they figured out how to kill the stuff that grows in the ground they figured out how to kill the stuff that feeds on the stuff that grows in the ground but you know what governments can't do they can't touch what God brings down from the heavens. They can't stop the flow from heavens. When you bring your tithe, you unlock the heavens. You unlock a heavenly blessing. Amen. Amen. I've got so many more, but not enough time. Amen. I mean, come on, you stand to your feet. I feel the anointing here. First thing I want to break is the spirit of fear. I want to break a spirit of fear. If you're, if you're struggling with fear, and maybe, maybe you've heard rumors, maybe even in your workplace, in your office, they're talking about layoffs. They're talking about, man, with the rising gas prices and all that kind of stuff. I want you to, to understand, like Elijah, he lost a source of provision. He lost a source of provision. The brook Cherith dried up. But you know what he didn't lose? He didn't lose a provider. Did you know that in this book, in the Bible, God has revealed himself with what, what we call in theological terms, covenant names covenant names the covenant name is where you see the the tetragrammaton which is the the hebrew won't pronounce it it's the yud hey vav hey yahavah they, they, they won't even say it so they say hashem which means the name but wherever you see yud hey vav hey it's translated in your bible lord and and, and you, you'll see lord jaira or sometimes it's yahweh Yireh or Jehovah Jireh. It's a covenant name. And it means I am the Lord who provides. In fact, the actual name Yireh is I am the Lord who seeing and in seeing provides. God revealed him and he cannot break his covenants, the Bible says. So you may lose a job. You may lose a paycheck. You may lose a source of provision. But if you're a tither, you never lose your provider. You never lose your provider. And can I tell you, some of the greatest recessions. The Bible says in Genesis 26, Isaac, because of the famine, sought to go down to Egypt. And God says, where are you going? It was like, Egypt, there's a famine here. God says, get back. Go back to the famine. You and me in a famine are greater than you on your own down in Egypt. So the Bible says, Isaac sowed in that land and that year he reaped 100 fold in that land so the man began to prosper became very prosperous and continued prospering so that the Philistines hated him I mean God put that verse in there just to just to upset all the anti-prosperity people three times in one verse prosper prospering prosperous Stick that in your religious pipe and smoke it. God wants you to flourish. So if fear has gripped you, just lift your hand. You don't need to fear. If you're around someone with their hand up, put a hand on their shoulder. Father, right now we break the spirit of fear. You don't need to fear. Sir, I love your shirt. Love never fails. You're 100% right. Love never fails. And I just hear God saying he's opening doors that you know not of. And the Lord would say to you, do not fear, my son, when one door closes, when one door shuts. For I am the Lord who opens and no man can shut. And when I shut, no man can open. And you have put your trust in me. And when you put your trust in the Lord, the Bible says those who put their trust in the Lord will not be put to shame. Do not fear. Do not be afraid, sir. I am opening doors of blessing in fact. There are some naysayers. Oh, it's going to go dark. Oh, it's going to go. If I was you, I would sit on that. Don't. You, you are going to so flat. In fact, it's going to be like you got a raise in this next season. You, you, more income is going to come in because God's hand is not short that it cannot save. God opens the windows of heaven. God has resources, the gold in the ground manna from heaven he he owns the cattle on a thousand hills as well as the thousand hills where the cattle is grazing father i break the spirit of fear and i break the lie of the devil 
over people's lives? Are they going to starve? Are they going to go without? Are they going to lose their homes? Are they going to be evicted or their cars are going to be repossessed? Father, we declare prosperity and we declare blessing in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I want everybody to lift both hands to, in, into, the, into the sky. Father, I thank you right now for an impartation of faith, an impartation of faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And God will say, if you will treasure my word, my word will always find you. No wonder the word kept finding Elijah, kept finding Elijah, kept finding Elijah, because Elijah made room for the word of God. You know how I know that God is going to look after you? Because you're here on a Wednesday night. You could be anywhere right now. You, you, you could be at, at, at the bowling alley with those liquid center bowling balls and the disco lights. But no, you're here. You could be wearing shoes that thousands of other people have worn. And if you forgot your socks, they got them. They got you. Got these smelly little socks with some powder in there. You know, the powder kills all the... You're here in the house of God because you value the Word of God. The devil's a liar. I thank you for faith. 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 I thank you that every single man and woman standing in this auditorium the hand of God, the favor of God, the goodness of God, the power of God flows over them. Father, I thank you for bold and courageous shepherds like Pastor John and Becky, who always lead with faith, who always lead with faith, always lead with courage, always lead with challenge. We thank you for them. We bless them. We thank you, Lord God, that as, as they vacate one property, Father, you're already in their next property, a greater property, a larger property. I see it filled with with leaders and discipleship overflowing, joy overflowing, kids birthday parties overflowing, youth meetings, youth group meetings, young adults overflowing, overflowing blessing over you. Father, I thank you right now for your supernatural provision. Now listen, I'm out of time. If your life is not right with God, there's a handsome man over here. Am I right? A few people. There's a handsome, there's a beautiful young lady called Sarah. Princess Sarah. Give us a wave, beautiful Sarah. If your life's not right with God, go and see Sarah. If, you're, if you brought someone who's not right with God, take them to Sarah. If you're away from God, go to Sarah. She's going to give you a Bible and a following Jesus book. Now, if you're like, well, hang on, they're giving free stuff away? Yes, go and see Sarah. We'll look after you as well. Church, one more time, raise your hands. Let me say a blessing over you. Father, I thank you for these magnificent sons and daughters. Father, we know that you, in your word, call us recession proof recession proof there is no recession that catch uh, that creeps up on God there is no recession that catches him off guard and there is no recession where his word does not work his word never fails his word framed the universe the Bible says in 2 Peter 3 that his word holds together the universe and at his word the universe responds that's why Jesus was able to say peace be still and immediately the wind and the waves obeyed him and they said to one another who can this be that even the he was the word in the boat and when the word spoke the world I want you to know responds the word works in every season father bless these beautiful people come on if you receive that give God a big amen wow what an amazing word I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did hey listen for more information about our church go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.